What up, ESO fans, and welcome to this Veteran Maelstrom Arena Guide. As always, I'm the White Lycan, and today we'll be taking a look at my build. Uh, we'll then be moving on to the various rounds. I'll be walking you through the main mechanics, and then ultimately focusing on the main boss battles at the end. If you're looking for help with a specific round, you can find links to uh, all of the various different rounds uh, listed in the comment section below. Whilst I briefly run through my build setup in the background, um, let's talk a little bit about why I've recorded this video. So Greymore's finally out, uh, which is amazing, and with it comes the opportunity to collect perfected Maelstrom Arena weapons, which I'm sure you're all aware of. Uh, so, I found myself thinking it would be really useful to create a, a very basic guide to VMA with the build that I've been running just recently and highlighting some of the key points in each round that will make it much easier to get through it. So if you found it tough going in the past, I really think this is going to be for you. This is a werewolf build, but let's start with having a look at the uh, character attributes outside of werewolf form and then we can switch it up and see how werewolf is uh, buffing your attributes. All this is really showing is uh, that Wealth really gives you a significant boost to your damage and your resistance. So we should really be looking to stay in Wealth form the entire time that we're inside the arena. You'll also note that the amount of points that I put there into health is quite significant, but I'll get to that in a bit. One thing I just wanted to mention about the skills, I've gone for Feral Pounce instead of Brutal Pounce. That's really just to keep the uptime of the Werewolf within the arena. Let's have a look at the gear and start breaking down the build a little bit more. So here you're looking at a blend between survivability and still putting out a decent amount of crit whilst at the same time uh, keeping those self heals high. What's also great about these sets is they're actually relatively easy to get hold of. Let's just touch on the consumables really quickly. So Ozogras is giving you that extra health which is very important in this build and a decent amount of stamina recovery. That Tri Restoration Potion and Damage Health Potion are both pretty standard for this kind of werewolf build. So here we have each round uh, laid out one after the other and uh, I've highlighted the ones in red that I've found the most challenging battles. Um, ultimately, you can see here, it starts off uh, fairly mild uh, until you get to that fifth round. From there on, you see an increasing complexity and difficulty in some of the mechanics uh, and the damage that you're taking also. I also wanted to focus on sigils within the arena. Simply put, they're just four separate buffs. If you're running this specifically for the weapons and you're not worried too much about your uh, score at the end, uh, then I would definitely advise using these as you go through uh, each of the battles. Now let's have a look at my uh, UI setup. Um, so I definitely advise you guys to always have the settings set up in this way uh, when you're playing any content in Elder Scrolls Online, but specifically for Veteran Maelstrom Arena um, because it's a very mechanically focused piece of content and if you don't have things switched on in this way you're going to be missing really crucial information that you'll need to know to survive the arena. So with all that being said, let's get in there and start breaking down the rounds. First up we got the Vault of the Surreal and what I've tried to do with these splash pages is effectively just highlight some of the key mechanics uh, and things to watch out for within the battle. So the Vault of the Surreal is really uh, a very mild intro to Veteran Maelstrom Arena. It's definitely the easiest of the arenas, um, but what I would advise is making sure that you have your Wealth Wolf Ultimate charged uh, before you go in there. Uh, that way that you can just pop, uh, pop it and you can get all of that uh, extra damage uh, straight away. You don't have to wait to build up your ultimate. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just literally just, you know, nuking down NPCs as they appear. Um, nothing really offering too much of a challenge. Uh, even the Daedros uh, not doing all that much damage there. Uh, so just sort of keeping my distance from any AoEs uh, that present themselves, but really just kind of dancing around and taking stuff out. Then round two, as you've just seen there, this sort of like whirlwind uh, appears on the floor with a, with an AoE underneath it that kind of follows you around. Um, if you stand in it for any prolonged period of time, it does do a bit of damage to you. Um, actually, not all that much either, uh, especially if you're geared in the way uh, that I've showed you previously. Um, but yeah, just just uh, from round two, really just keep moving. Um, that would be my main piece of advice. Don't really stand in one place um, for any prolonged period of time. With what will seem like no time at all, you'll be at the final boss. And that is uh, Maxus the Elementalist. Um, he's got a bit of health to him, uh, but honestly, this is not a particularly difficult fight uh, by any means. 
Uh, there's a mechanic to it. The mechanic is uh, very easy to explain. Basically, he'll spawn the adds uh, in one position, then he'll move to another position in the arena, uh, go in a clockwise formation. Um, the mechanic is that you need to kill the adds uh, before he moves on to the next part of the arena, uh, or he'll effectively take those adds' uh, remaining health and uh, rejuvenate his own health. Um, the thing is, is with this build, uh, we've put up decent amount of DPS. Um, it's not massive uh, because of the survivability, but it's certainly enough to take down this guy uh, and any of the ads surrounding him. So just keep applying Claws of Life to everybody and uh, just lots of howls of agony. Cool. So next up, we've got Seth's Balcony. Uh, this is another one of those arenas that I don't ever really struggle with. Um, as long as you understand the mechanics, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. And so let me walk you through some of those uh, those mechanics. So um, the main one you really want to be looking out for is these uh, these spinning flails um, that uh, circle the arena. They essentially they put a bleed on you, uh, which you can see um, down uh, in the bottom of part of your screen. Uh, the uh, red icon that now has uh, 12 on it. Um, uh, effectively, every time you get hit by one of those flails, it, it continually stacks, and that uh, stack lasts for um, 10 seconds, providing uh, you don't get hit by another flail. Um, when it starts to get around 20, you're going to start to notice some uh, negative effects on your health uh, with this build, um, and so around then, uh, my advice would be to, uh, you see this lever? Uh, basically pop that lever uh, and what it will do is it will stop the flails from moving, allowing you to stay in one place for a period of time and, and just essentially get rid of the um, get rid of the bleed altogether and reset it. Uh, you're going to get hit by these flails, it's going to happen unfortunately. Another quick thing I'll mention about the arena is there's this uh, electrical uh, centre to it that you definitely want to stay out of. So we're in the final round uh, here now uh, and um, there isn't just the one boss in this round, there's actually three of them. Um, sounds a lot more intimidating than it actually is because you only ever have to fight one of them at uh, any particular time. And you'll have to uh, take down uh, all of their health uh, bit by bit. Uh, so you, you're attacking them, trying to watch out for the air wees that are happening, keeping an eye on the stack bleed damage that you're getting from those flails at the same time as well. And uh, yeah, they're trying to dodge out of that uh, heavy attack. Um, so if you need to, if you need to trigger uh, one of the um, levers, uh, you can still do that. When you do do that, it will cause whichever uh, of the centurions is active to run to the center and they'll, uh, they'll take uh, some heals. Uh, and so what I would advise is, uh, basically you can pop that very early on in the start uh, of the fight to just try and wipe uh, as much of the, um, the bleed away to start with. Uh, and then uh, just minimize the amount of times you have to do it. If you can uh, dance around uh, the AoEs and just, uh, you know, uh, really try to not pick up those stacks uh, and have it wipe uh, within that 10 seconds, then that's, that's probably the best uh, best thing to do uh, rather, than, rather than triggering it. It'll make the, the fight last a lot less long. Um, so yeah, just um, trying to avoid those those nasty AoEs that he fires up in the air. Um, nothing really to worry about in terms of attacks. You're just keeping an eye on your health and you're keeping an eye on that um, stacking bleed damage. Um, so the other thing to mention for Wells here is that this uh, particular battle can be a difficult one to stay in Wells form. Uh, you know, we uh, we have the Feral Pants uh, equipped. Uh, which is giving us uh, one second's worth uh, whenever we do a pounce uh, of werewolf back. Um, but other than that and just doing damage, uh, there's really nothing to eat on the floor. Uh, that is until you've taken down one of the centurions. So um, my advice would be as soon as one of them goes down, uh, just feed on him uh, regardless of your bleed uh, damage. Uh, just uh, try and heal yourself and, um, and just do that. Um, it's very important to try and keep Werewolf um, form up uh, throughout all of the rounds and run into the next round, you know, without having to build um, uh, that uh, ultimate back up again. Um, so, uh, as you can see, two of them down now, so I'm just going in there, feeding straight away, um, and uh, just taking down the third. Alright, next we've got the Drome of Toxic Shock. I've assigned it an um, amber battle value, um, mainly because 
you take a, a lot of damage in this fight and if you're not being careful to pay attention to the mechanics in the fight um you can uh, you can go down relatively easily if you do follow the mechanics uh you'll be absolutely fine so let's talk a little bit about those mechanics first up you've got the water don't stand in it because every now and again the main boss who's just uh, sitting at the side of the arena will cause the water to electrify and you'll take a huge amount of damage so if you're in there for any long period of time uh, you'll die. Um, the second main mechanic to focus on here is the stranglers. The stranglers put a uh, sort of like a uh, speed reduction on you uh, which makes it very very tricky to escape from AoEs. You can see AoEs are happening all over the various different islands. Um, so basically as soon as they appear within the arena you want to target them straight away you want to make sure that they go down uh, they are number one priority throughout the fight so just keeping an eye on them keep an eye on their spawn timers you know uh when they uh do come in uh race over to them you can use dodge roll uh to get yourself past the uh the water uh and uh dodge roll also you know gives you a little bit more distance as well uh so you can actually get in and uh and do damage to those uh also pounce obviously is very very useful within this uh this period of the fight at this point during round three a hag raven will spawn into the arena um she can uh she can cause a wipe uh, she does uh, various different uh, mechanics. One of them is to chain you towards her, uh, which means that she can either pull you into a place in the in the water that you, you don't want to be at, or pull you into an AOE uh, the, where you don't want to be. Um, and if you're slowed at the same time by these stranglers, um, that can uh, put you in a difficult place. Uh, she also drops, I believe, an AOE around her as well that does a, a huge amount of damage. So really you want to try and get her down as soon as uh, possible, as soon as she's in the arena. Other than her, I wouldn't say there's any specific NPCs that you should really worry too much about in this battle. Um, so now we're on to the final boss, uh, and she enters the arena and heads straight towards you. You want to make sure that you pull her uh, towards, obviously, towards an island, um, because at some point she will electrify the water again. There's no uh, health mechanic here, or uh, the only real uh, things that you need to watch out for is stranglers uh, will continue to uh, spawn throughout the fight, so prioritize them just, you know, as always, using your uh, dodge roll if you can to get close to them. You can see I'm highly stamina drained there, so I should have used a uh, pot potentially. Um, also, uh, a note with the pots, just try to um, reserve them for periods of time uh, in the battle where either you are trying to um, burn something, or uh, periods of time uh, where you uh, desperately need to regain a health or magicka to heal yourself. Um, so really keep them, you know, keep them ready uh, for that period of time and trying to overuse them um, would be my advice. So here we're simply just applying a dot to the boss where we can. Uh, again, keeping an eye on the stranglers. Uh, trying to avoid her conal frontal AoE, which can stun you uh, if there are ads in the arena at the same time uh, when you get stunned and you're taking lightning damage uh, from an AoE, uh, that can definitely add up. Uh, so keep moving around the island. Uh, you know, uh, if you feel like that you have to jump to another island, uh, dodge rolling past that or, or pouncing past that, uh, and just slowly kind of taking her health down. Um, when you get to this point, you can literally just straight straight burn her. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, so uh, just go ham. And down she goes. So a nice easy fight here next with Set's Flywheel. Apart from just killing things where they stand, uh, there's only one mechanic that I can really think of that you should pay attention here. Um, so there are these small clockwork sentries that you can see. They roll into the uh, arena from various different places. Um, they look like just kind of balls rolling along the floor, really. And they'll uh, essentially take up position uh, around the central area. When they do, they'll start emitting lightning attacks coming towards you, which do a bit of damage, but that can stack up so best to kill them before they actually get there. If they do manage to get there and they sit there for a short period of time, they'll lock up in this state that you can see there where they're kind of glowing, emitting electricity. Uh, that's actually a damage shield and you won't be able to do any damage to them 
uh, at that point. So they're, they're literally sentries uh, uh, at that stage and uh, you just have to avoid the attacks that are coming at you. So again, best to try and kill them with a dot or a howl of agony uh, uh, or just generally bringing the adds over to where they are and kind of nuking them at the same time. Uh, but just always keep your eye out for them. Uh, it is really the only mechanic going on uh, throughout the various rounds building up to the final boss uh, that you ever have to really uh, keep an eye out for. Other than this, just, you know, being mindful to stay out of AoEs and uh, uh, essentially fight some of the uh, enemies off your back. So using that central column to kind of break them up a little bit and kind of draw, draw them around the arena. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, nothing uh, doing a huge amount of damage. So now in round three, uh, Kofid would spawn. He's like a mini boss uh, and there'll be some smaller adds alongside him, including some healers. Um, he... He does a decent amount of damage uh, if you stand close to him and you take, uh, you know, uh, hits from that heavy attack. Uh, but uh, my advice here would just be to, just like I'm doing here, kind of just stepping backwards and uh, just putting a dot on him every now and again, uh, slamming a heavy attack, you know, and maybe a howl here and there. Uh, and uh, as I rotate around the arena, just taking swipes at those sentries as well, um, trying to keep those uh, numbers down on those. You can see an example here of where quite a few of them have managed to get into position and I'm getting quite a lot of lightning damage coming at me from various different positions. So, so try not to let that happen. Um, but even if it does, uh, again, you'll probably survive it. Um, so final round here, uh, we got the control guardian. Uh, so immediately what I'm doing here is uh, just like engine guardian, uh, there's the mechanic where you're, you're underneath him doing damage or uh, you know, you're having to step away from him. So once you're underneath him, uh, you're nice and safe. You can put dots on him. You can uh, you know, really go to town um, and try and do as much damage as possible. Uh, as soon as he uh, starts you know, shooting fire below him like uh, he's doing there, you step away and you need to try in this phase to do as much damage as possible to the adds and try and bring down those adds. Um, because as you're walking around uh, the, uh, the control uh, guardian there you'll also be taking uh, damage from them otherwise so uh, you can see he's on the move now as soon as he is you want to get back underneath there because now is the time to again get in there and do as much damage as you can um, really most of the time I only go through two of these phases I can burn him between that time uh, which is another reason why this particular arena is uh, is pretty pretty easy uh, so yeah just stepping away um, and you know not panicking is really uh, it's really a controlled situation you know rinse and repeat um, and uh, you don't take a huge amount of damage from from anything at all so uh, yeah just try and you know get rid of as many of those sentries as you can applying dots on the other ads uh, and then get back underneath them and finish them off uh, at this stage it's just a straight burn to the end um, as soon as as soon as he does go down Make sure that you do uh, feed, uh, top up your whale form, and then it's uh, straight on through to the next round. Now we come to the first real challenge of uh, Maelstrom Arena. Uh, Rink of Frozen Blood is a bit of a step up in difficulty uh, and the amount of damage that you're gonna take. Uh, there's mechanics in here that you must follow uh, otherwise it's gonna uh, cause a wifey, but not to worry. Uh, let me walk you through it and give you some pointers to help you survive. Uh, so the first part of the mechanic uh, within the arena is the, the water. Uh, stay out of it for as much as you possibly can do. Uh, use paints to paint between islands uh, and attack targets uh, uh, to keep you out of it uh, for as long as possible. Um, if you are in it, you start to take this, uh, this ice damage which stacks over time and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and it will, it'll take you out after a while. Uh, the second main mechanic uh, is uh, the one that you can see sort of shuffling towards me now. It is the Trollbreaker and his uh, entire purpose in life is to try and break uh, these islands. Uh, he'll spawn, he'll run to a random island, and uh, he'll try to destroy it, and you have a period of time to either interrupt him or do damage enough to him to kill him. Um, I would always advise going in for the interrupt to start with, uh, and then take him down, but these trolls, uh, they as soon as they come into the arena, they must die. doesn't matter what you're focusing on, even if it's the main boss, because if they manage to break that island, then it reduces the amount of space you've got to fight in, and ultimately makes things uh, a lot more difficult for you. Um, so at this point in round three of the fight, you'll get uh, Lemonids uh, spawning in as well. 
Um, these do uh, quite a significant amount of damage. I would focus on these. I, within this fight, I would always focus on uh, sort of like the smaller ranged uh, AoE uh, sort of creating uh, DPS. Uh, so the, the archers and the, the mage that you just saw behind you there, uh, Lemonids as soon as they come in as well. Uh, and somewhat ignore the larger targets, maybe placing a dot on them here and there. Uh, you will get a chance uh, after the uh, the various spawn waves to uh, kind of clean them up and uh, and take them down. So again, I'm focusing on uh, the uh, the chill blame there uh, because it, they do uh, a significant amount of damage when they're all up uh, and they're all targeting you, especially at this point in the fight. Sometimes I even um, you know sometimes I even uh, I'll pop uh, a. Uh, one of the sigils around the side, and maybe the, the healing sigil or the uh, the armor sigil, uh, because uh, it's quite often that you'll face a situation where you, uh, you just get stacking damage and uh, and it can take you out. And if you're you know if you're trying to keep your number of deaths down, um, that's something you're going to want to avoid. Cool. So final boss time, Matriarch Runa. Remember I said at the beginning to uh, make sure that you've got your percentages turned on uh, on your UI above there. Uh, this is uh, one of the main reasons for why. Um, this battle uh, relies on you keeping an eye on her health bar um, and uh, effectively uh, killing uh, the adds when they spawn in, trying to survive the various uh, damage attacks that she does in and around her feet, which are, which are quite nasty. Uh, so when she hits... Um, 75% what she's going to do regardless of if there's a troll breaker uh, on the island or not she's going to break that island um, you uh, cannot be on that island when she uh, goes past uh, 75% because if you're caught in that that attack that I've just uh, showed you in front of me there um, you'll get stunned and then uh, either the ice damage will get you or she'll follow up with an attack that will get you and that will that will wipe you so you just have to you have to pay attention to a health bar and pay attention to that first 75% um, again troll break is a priority if they get out of hand if they uh, manage to run to a different island that you're not currently on uh, and they take out an island um, that's pretty much a wipe when it comes to the battle uh, you need all three islands to stay up all the way to the end uh, because the longer that you're in the water at the very end, um, the more likely it is that you're uh, you're going to die just um, based on the damage that you take from the water itself. So uh, still keeping them as priority. Uh, putting a dot on the boss, Claws of Life will help keep you on your feet as well. And you saw at 45%, she just did that same attack and I just about managed to uh, uh, avoid it um, uh, and uh, get over to the other island. Uh, so we've got Lemonids in now as well, which we need to be killing because uh, they'll, uh, they'll do a decent amount of damage to you. And um, just essentially just slowly uh, damaging the boss. Um, similar to, I guess, some of the other giants that you encounter uh, at, the other, uh, at the end of the other rounds. Um, I would definitely focus more on the smaller uh, adds uh, every time they spawn in than focusing on her. Uh, and bringing her health down in a nice kind of slow controlled manner. This is not a burn fight. It's, uh, it can't be, uh, because if, if you were to try, uh, you would get wiped um, by the island uh, coming apart. So, that being said, we're now below 20%, and this is the uh, final island. So, if you leave her for too long uh, and you clear those as she will take out that last island. Uh, so, you really do just need to start uh, hammering her uh, with uh, DPS. Um, what I would advise is uh, if you're struggling with this last uh, burn, then try and pick up some of the sigils, maybe the damage sigil, uh, the shield sigil as well. Uh, that will really help you uh, get you through the fight. Moving on to the Spiral Shadows. Uh, I quite like this one. Um, honestly, it's not very difficult at all. There's one core mechanic that you, uh, that you really want to focus on throughout the majority of the rounds. Um, the reason why I've classed it as an amber fight is because there's one key part of that final boss mechanic that if you don't uh, expect to be coming, if you don't uh, time it and set it up correctly, uh, it can cause a wipe and it can cause you to wipe several times over if you're not clued in as to what's going on. Uh, but don't worry, we'll get to that. So as you just saw there a second ago, um, I killed a hover and I killed a hover around one of these pillars that's webbed. And you can see now there's this spider that's appeared that's desperately trying to web it up again. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to be light attacking these Horvers, these guys, when they come in. And um, trying to bring them over to these pillars. Um, and trying to keep uh, essentially them 
unwebbed uh, because at a certain point of the uh, fight um, this will happen uh, you'll have the spiders that will come into the arena and the only thing that will save you will be you standing being able to stand next to the pillars that are illuminated and there will only be pillars that are illuminated uh, if they're unwebbed so these spiders will keep spawning in and they'll desperately be trying to web them back up again that one there was successful you've got about maybe three seconds uh, before they actually uh, uh, manage to web it to uh, take it down Usually, uh, you know, uh, uh, if, if you if you shout a, a howl of agony uh, at one of them, uh, they disappear fairly quickly. But yeah, just again, uh, light attack of those horvers to bring them over to the pillars because anything more than that is going to do too much damage to them. They're very, very squishy. If you do manage to uncover all of the pillars, uh, as soon as you do that, um, you cause like an ex light explosion to happen and all of the enemies within the arena are stunned. Uh, and it gives you a period of time to do damage to them whilst they can't hit you back so that's that's quite a powerful cc um i would use it in any other round apart from in uh this fourth round um in the fourth round especially when the lurchers are up you want to be in this position you want to have four of the five pillars uncovered going into the final round um there's a very specific reason for this and it has to do with the uh, the wipe uh, that I mentioned, uh, which can happen on this final boss. Um, so, the plan for this boss is that we want to get her to 75%, and then we want to uncover that final pillar, and we want to stun her. We then pop the, the damage sigil, which is the, the axe that you can see in front of you, and, um, and basically nuke. And the reason we do this is because, um, as you can see now, she's enraged. Uh, the longer she stays enraged, the more her damage uh, increases, especially the spit attack that she does and the lightning attacks. Um, after a period of time, uh, that damage will increase to the point where she will just wipe you. She'll start hitting you with like 40, 50k attacks. But stunning her by uncovering all five pillars at once removes that enraged uh, mechanic altogether and it resets it. And uh, I find that with this build, between the time uh, that she then becomes enraged again, uh, and you being able to nuke her, you can uh, you can you can get her down. So here we go. Uh, activate the plan. Uh, triggered all uh, five pillars, and uh, going in for the burn. Um, just another thing to note: uh, there's a smaller version of her within the uh, arena as well, and I uh, always make sure to kill that uh, before I go in for the burn. Uh, because uh, she also gets a buff uh, from that smaller version of her. So really it needs to go down before you do your nuke. Really uh, keeping control of the pillars uh, within the fight and keeping an eye on that spider that's constantly trying to cover them up um, is uh, the most important thing that you really need to focus on. Next up, the Vault of Umbridge. Uh, definitely, in my opinion, the most difficult arena uh, within Maelstrom. Uh, cool, so let's begin. So let's start by focusing on the Venom Shop Archers. Uh, as long as these guys are up and in the arena, uh, you should really shift your focus from any other ads uh, within the arena to try and nuke them down as quickly as possible. The reason being is because they'll do this uh, charged heavy attack, uh, which will uh, hit you for a significant amount of damage. Definitely make them a priority. Um, the second mechanic to focus on is the, uh, can you see the plants in and around uh, the arena? Um, this is the uh, this is the real killer. This is uh, probably what is responsible for me uh, for the most uh, amount of wipes uh, within the arena. Um, basically those uh, plants will spawn uh, a growing uh, AoE. Most of the time this AoE will appear when you've uh, stepped within a meter or so of the plant. So it sort of senses the or near it and then it starts to trigger. If you are caught by this uh, plant, uh, essentially it puts a damage over time effect on you. Um, you have around maybe four to five seconds. Uh, to do something about it and um, what you do about it is you uh, you see the glowing pool uh, that pool there uh, is um, is what essentially clears the damage over time effect on you also though something to remember is that there's only two of these pools uh, per round uh, so if you've used uh, one uh, be aware that you've only got one chance left to cure yourself uh, if you get snagged by one of these plants uh, somewhere in, in the middle of the arena it can be very, very difficult to get to that pool in time. 
uh, and it can uh, be responsible for a wave. So what I generally tend to do is, is kind of lurk and hang around where these pools are, but don't stand directly in them and try and damage enemies because you won't be able to. The next NPC to focus on is the Venom Callers. Uh, they will uh, turn your screen green, so you'll know they're in the arena, just like you're seeing here. And they'll also cause the mushrooms to kind of overcharge and, and kind of keep going off. So for this reason, they must die. Uh, they are the key priority as soon as they appear. Cool. So now we come to the final boss, the Argoian Behemoth. Um, this boss is fairly straightforward. Um, in terms of the arena overall, uh, I think the boss battle is probably the easiest part of it, potentially. Um, you, it should be mentioned that you still get uh, Venom Callers appearing in all four corners of the arena. As mentioned previously, uh, they make it much more likely that you're going to get attacked by a mushroom. So they're still key priority for me. As well as keeping on top of the Venom Callers, uh, you also have to deal with uh, the boss's mechanics, uh, including the one that you're seeing here. Uh, don't worry, I'll go into explaining uh, what's happening here because it's really a case of rinse and repeat. So the boss mechanics are as follows. You damage it to the point where the Minder Warden, like the Lightning Wardens, appear. There will always be two of them. Um, then uh, what you do is maybe put a dot on the boss and uh, kill one of those Minders. It's very important after that one goes down that you do not kill the second Minder because what's going to happen is after that first Minder goes down, uh, the boss is going to start to charge a heavy attack and the Minder that's still alive is going to create a shield effectively and um, and you need to be in that shield uh, whilst uh, the boss is doing his attack. Uh, so let's have a quick look at how that looks basically. So the first Minder has just gone down due to the uh, dot that I put on him and you can see that the boss is charging that attack and I've uh, just about in the nick of time managed to run to the other Minder and get within the uh, damage shield. Uh, you really don't have much time to be able to do that. Uh, do notice that you can do damage to the boss whilst you're inside that shield. So, especially as a werewolf, uh, you want to be keeping within a 6 meter uh, distance of the boss uh, when that shield, ideally when that shield uh, is activated. Um, because uh, that period of time is a really nice juicy period of time to try and get in, you know, as much uh, as much damage as you can. After this you, uh, you kill the uh, remaining minder and then just rinse and repeat, doing damage to the boss again until the other minders come out. Um, until the boss is around 10% uh, like you see here, uh, and then just go uh, full nuke. Obviously what makes this uh, even more tricky is the fact that all of this is going on in and around the mushrooms and the venom callers appearing every now and again. Um, so it's a case of doing your very best to uh, take them out and avoid those uh, AoEs. Next on the list is Igneous Cistern, and as you can see I've marked it green. Uh, this arena is really very easy, and I usually find it uh, quite a nice break in between uh, the, uh, the previous uh, arena and the final arena. There's really only one thing within this arena that does uh, a significant enough damage uh, to you to, uh, to cause a wipe, uh, and that is the Kin Gods. Um, they do uh, sort of a, I guess you could call it like a ranged fire attack, uh, you can see one doing one now. Uh, basically, they'll put the staff up in the air, and um, the fireballs that come from that attack do a significant amount of damage. Luckily, uh, they can be interrupted, uh, and they can also be feared. Uh, so they're pretty easy to uh, control, um, but just getting to them in time is the key. So the main thing to think about, the main thing to concentrate on in this arena is killing them as soon as they appear. Um, sometimes it's a case of... Uh, just keeping an eye on the uh, the spawns within the arena. Uh, sometimes it's a case that you'll see your damage, your um, health will start to uh, to drop significantly, and you'll see those fireballs coming out of uh, uh, nowhere. So you're looking around to see uh, where they currently are. Um, you, the use of pants to uh, to get over to them quickly is uh, you know is really useful. Um, the other thing to mention is you know don't stand still in this arena. Um, that's pretty much the case for every arena in Maelstrom. Um, but uh, specifically this one, because we have uh, we have like fire, uh, lava attacks that are causing like small airways every now and again on the on the ground. They're just kind of shooting in from outside of the arena. They do a, a little bit of damage as well, and that can stack up obviously in the, if you're in uh, another AOE. Um, this guy's uh, pretty easy, uh, as well as the other mini bosses uh, within the arena. 
the the mechanic of this is that you cannot damage him uh, until you've taken out uh, one of the warding stones, which is one of these things. Um, so with the mini bosses, you only have to take out one. With the final boss, you have to take out all three. Uh, and a bit of advice would be uh, that before she even spawns into the arena, the uh, the warding stone spawns, so you can actually start to damage them before she comes in. Um, and that can save a little bit of time. Um, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're quite squishy. So the boss's mechanic, super easy. Uh, you take out all three warding stones, uh, which stuns her. Uh, you then get a period of time to do damage to her uh, before those warding stones then re, uh, rejoin. My biggest bit of advice would be trying to time when to trigger that last warding stone uh, to go down uh, so that you uh, essentially you don't have a, a kin gold on you straight away that you have to you know run across the other side of the arena to get to and focus damage on them that you can consistently focus damage on the uh, on the, the, the boss uh, and the main way to do that I guess is to uh, just literally try and try and trigger after the king gold's gone down. Uh, because after the King Gods go down, uh, you're not likely to see another one for a short period of time. So try to get your damage in uh, at that point. So the reason why I think that this arena is pretty easy, I mean if you compare it to the previous arena, um, in this arena you only have uh, really one NPC that you need to watch out for that's going to do any kind of significant amount of damage. Whereas in the previous arena, you had at least two at any one time, plus AoEs on the floor that would, you know, kill you within five seconds. Um, unless you did something about it, you know, there's, so there's only one mechanic here and that's find the king gold and kill it and then just get straight back on the boss. Uh, and so, you know, this, this final burn of this boss can be a bit frustrating because it locks up and you have to go and run around, uh, you know, do the round robin again uh, with all of the warding stones, but, um, you know, I, you shouldn't struggle with it. Uh, so just kind of use it as a, as a period of time to kind of mentally chill. Uh, because the final arena that we'll be talking about in a second uh, actually has uh, quite a lot of different things that you have to look out for uh, throughout the, um, the entirety of the fight uh, and uh, it changes uh, quite significantly as well um, so uh, yeah just enjoy this uh, this period of time So we come to it last, the final round in Veteran Maelstrom Arena, um, the Theatre of Despair. This one's not without challenges, but with a knowledge of what you need to do in the arena, uh, you'll be absolutely fine. The first NPC that should always get your attention are the Dramora King Girl. Um, basically, they're very similar to the Argonian Venom Shot. Uh, in that they will uh, charge this heavy attack, interrupt them or fear them and uh, kill them as quickly as you can. Next I'd like to focus on the core mechanic um, within this arena. Uh, these are the ghosts, uh, you can see the white ones uh, floating in front of you. There's the white kind and there's the gold kind. Uh, the white ones, um, they do damage to you and they uh, put a snare on you as well so you definitely want to be avoiding them. The gold kind are uh, effectively uh, buffs for the NPCs and they'll head towards the NPCs and give them like a, like a damage mitigation shield. Uh, but if you get there before them and pick them up um, and you're able to do that three times, you then activate a synergy which will then uh, freeze the um, the enemies uh, within the arena. Very similar to the effect that the pillars have on NPCs within the Spiral Shadows arena. This synergy becomes vital at certain points during the fight, uh, but we'll touch on that a little bit later on. So second on our list of uh, NPCs that need to die as soon as possible is the Crematorial Guard. And they look exactly like Daedros until they start doing uh, their main uh, core mechanic, which is this uh, fire breath. You can see that they'll go into an enraged state and start doing that. Just sidestep around the NPC uh, and effectively you'll completely avoid any of that damage altogether. It takes a little bit of uh, getting used to, but uh, it's actually very, very easy. And once you've done it a few times, you'll get a feel for how to handle those guys. In the fourth round, uh, Dramora Narcanas will appear. Uh, these are essentially Dramora mages and they'll start on the 
right side of the arena, they'll spawn in and they'll start slowly walking and making their way to the center. Luckily, you can fear them, which buys you some time uh, and uh, allows you to do enough damage to them uh, before they get near the central area. Uh, if they do reach the central area, just like this one has done behind me there, uh, you can see that she uh, starts to summon. If you leave uh, maybe one or two there doing that for any kind of like prolonged period of time, Eventually, they'll manage to summon a large Bone Colossus that starts to spam these uh, quite nasty fire airways all the way around the uh, arena. You can survive it, uh, you can manage to take him down before succumbing to the damage, but uh, it's kind of 50-50 really, so you really don't want to get there. You want to focus on those uh, Narcanaz uh, as soon as they come into the arena and just pour all of your attention and your damage and uh, CC into them. So as you can see, I'm continuing to collect gold ghosts. And if you see the synergy at the bottom there, spectral explosion, you can see I've got that ready and queued up uh, to use uh, should I need it. And we're just about to uh, reach the point at which you uh, you do need to use it for the first time. Um, and that's with the Ash Titan. So uh, try to build that up and keep that ready for the start of the fifth round. Uh, and then yeah, use that uh, explosion to just CC him uh, for a short period of time and, um, and put some damage into him. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to do as much damage as I would like to have done there, but still managed to get his health down to around 50%. Um, around 50% uh, as we're spawning the arena, two of them are the Mora King Gold, so obviously you need to switch your focus on that point straight to them uh, and trying to interrupt them should they try and charge a heavy attack. Um, and uh, just nuking them down. And so once they've gone down, uh, just straight back on the mini boss uh, and just try and bring him down as quickly as you can. Cool, so after that, it's just a case of uh, clearing up uh, the last ants uh, that tend to spawn towards the end of this hell and uh, moving on to the final round. Cool, so this is the final round, and our main opponent is called Voreak Sulky. There are essentially three parts to this fight. The first includes uh, the boss spawning into the arena on its own, and uh, he'll then portal to uh, another place within the arena, and he'll start doing this attack. Now, that attack needs to be interrupted. He always does that within the first few seconds of the fight. It's well publicized by him lifting his staff up in the air, but it does a heck of damage, so gonna want to look at it uh, as a top priority within this stage of the fight. So uh, just keep an eye out for it. And then you can see after that, we have a uh, Dramora Mage that's uh, in the arena and a, uh, another crematorial guard. Uh, so the way I tend to uh, play this first part uh, of this battle is uh, essentially just focusing entirely on the boss and try and burn him to uh, around 70% or just below 70% if you can. Try and ignore the other two ads that are in the arena and uh, stay out of the fire as best you can. Uh, when you do that, uh, he's actually going to leave the arena. Um, and so that makes the situation a lot safer uh, because you're no longer taking damage from the boss and you're no longer likely to uh, succumb to that uh, that very uh, high damaged attack. So now he's left the arena and uh, we're just tidying up the ads. Uh, and now we've got these clan fears that appear within the arena and also an AoE that tries to uh, catch you under your feet. The AoE uh, doesn't do a huge amount of damage. Um, the clan fears need to be essentially kited over to these pads here, uh, which are portals and then killed right next to them. That will then activate that portal and it will send you up to the top. So this is why I class uh, as the second part of the fight. Effectively, we'll not be able to damage the boss uh, again until we've brought down these crystals. Uh, and what the boss is trying to do is uh, knock us off of this platform to prevent you being able to do that. But obviously what we want to do is stay up here as much as we can and do uh, as much damage to these crystals as possible uh, so we can get back on the boss. Uh, and you can down. So um, there are two attacks uh, that he'll send at you, uh, and um, one of them is uh, this one. So he'll, uh, you know, have his staff up in the air and he'll be charging it. And you'll notice that there's this sort of like rock wall. Um, you just need to stand behind that uh, and wait uh, for him to uh, do that heavy attack, and uh, you'll not get knocked off. Straight after that, he'll do this attack. Uh, which, where he fires like one of these skulls at you and you need to be able to dodge roll that within a second or so of that coming at you. So that always happens and it happens, all of these things happen in a rotation. So when you first go up to the top, he'll do uh, that charge skull attack. So you just dodge roll that. Uh, straight after that, you'll have the uh, the phase where you have to hide uh, behind the, the stones. 
and then um, you'll have the skull attack straight after that, which you need to dodge roll. And then a few seconds after that, you'll have another skull attack coming at you. Uh, and then you're back to the stone wall. And then it's just two skull attacks, basically stone wall and so on. Um, also, be very careful to uh, to not stand in the AoEs when you're up there. Uh, there are like uh, fire AoEs of um, like Holt Molten uh, Lava coming at you. Uh, and they stun you and do a, a whack of damage. Uh, they can be responsible for a wipe for sure if you get caught in too many of them. So uh, watch your feet uh, during that period of time. So I've dropped down here um, actually to restore my werewolf form uh, because I saw that it was getting quite low and I definitely want to keep that up uh, towards the end of the fight. So we're uh, just killing this clan for here and then we go straight back up to finish the last crystal. So again, just to re uh, reinforce this, so the skull attack comes at you, straight away there you go. And then straight after that, he'll start queuing up that heavy attack that requires you to stand behind the stones. Uh, but we don't need to do that because we've just killed the last crystal and he's going to send us down anyway and he's going to come and join us himself. Uh, so when as soon as he comes in, he starts charging that uh, attack which does... Uh, a huge amount of damage, the one that he did at the beginning. Uh, and so we definitely want to interrupt that. Straight after that, the two things that we want to focus on is the Narcanaz killing the first one. She's in the arena. She's again trying to summon the uh, Bone Colossus and picking up these golden ghosts. Uh, trying to pick up three of them. Uh, so what we can do there is to lock down the boss and uh, lock down all of the rest of the adds, including the uh, cre crematorial guard that will spawn in now and uh, finish him off, really. Uh, so just looking out for those golden ghosts is uh, as much as you possibly can. And now we're in a position to do that. So we've done it. Uh, everybody is uh, CC'd apart from ourselves and uh, it's just a case of nuking the boss. And that, in my opinion, is a strong tactic to killing the final boss of Veteran Maelstrom Arena. And all that's left to do now is to open the chest and hope that the uh, weapon that I'm looking for is inside. In my particular case, I'm looking for the bow, and I did have to rerun uh, Veteran Maelstrom Arena uh, quite a few times until that one dropped. Uh, so, so hopefully it does drop for you first time, but if you have to run it a few times, hopefully this has made things clearer for you. Uh, and if you do run it in this way, uh, once or twice is all you need to really start getting into the swing of it. Uh, and uh, it starts becoming somewhat second nature, just like anything really. Um, but hopefully uh, some of the hints and tips I've provided you with there uh, will help you avoid uh, too many wipes and so you can get nice quick runs in, significantly decreasing the time it's going to take you to uh, collect that weapon. I'm happy to say that the perfected version of the bow did uh, finally drop for me. You can see the main difference uh, between the uh, unperfected and perfected version is that uh, 643 weapons crit, which is very tasty. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, journey. It's been a hell of a lot of fun returning to this content. Uh, I just want to very briefly thank Fighting Tyler and Shahara for allowing me to use their awesome rock songs in the background. They do rock, and you can find links to their albums in the comment section below. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Take care.